Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of Two Guys Small Talk. I am TJ Washup. And I'm Evan O'Neill. Today's episode is April Showers Out of Power. <laughs> we had a bad storm down here and I lost my power and I write the show title, so suck it. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, he said he was out of uh, power since 3 p.m. until, what, 7 or 8? No, I don't think it was that late. I think it came back on about 2 a.m., so a good 11 2 hours. 2 a.m.? Yeah, oh. dude. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Thank you was... for candles, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> one of my just a funny, funny note before we start, man. Uh, one of my tea candles that I had lit around the house, it dried up. You know, all the wax burned away, and then the the fucking aluminum casing just exploded into fire. And I was like, Oh God! What? Yeah, it was freaky, man. It was freaky. <laughs> That's so not supposed to happen. <laughs> so I snuffed out the rest of them before they got too too far down. But uh, anyways, man, let's dig in. All right. So, um, for this episode, we decided to ask um, a group, the two guys group, uh, what topics we should cover. Uh, we, gave, we put up a poll on our group a form uh, to tell us what they wanted to hear. The first topic was technology. Um, so, I decided to talk about the new um, news that's going around with SpaceX. Um, so, basically, if you don't yeah, know what SpaceX is, um, their goal is to improve the cost of uh, flight using reusable rockets in order to lead to a city on Mars. That's their, their end goal. Visionaries. Um, yeah. Now, 80% of their parts are made in-house because they're trying to you know, build reusable rockets. They're, they're trying um, to minimize uh, contract work, which uh, I think will probably end up being more expensive in the long run due possibly. to inflation and I'm, all of that stuff. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure I'm not a, on that, but um, I do know that NASA, uh, for their space missions, every mission costs about 100 to $260 million, yeah. which yeah. is a shit ton. Yeah, man, <laughs> considering uh, that a lot of that stuff gets either dumped in the ocean or in space. Yeah, because they can't reuse it, which is insane. Like, all that is basically just to get... All that metal, space. man. We've yeah. got... We've got a floating uh, shield of trash out there in the atmosphere. Most of it kind of s- comes back into the atmosphere and burns up. So if you ever see a shooting star, it's probably trash. Probably. I mean, we do have satellites up there, but a lot of it is from, you know, space particles from us sending our rockets up there or other countries. Now, for space, the SpaceX program, their Falcon 9 rocket, they cost about $57 million to make. About half the price, huh? Yeah, but it is reusable. Um, Third it burns, of the price, maybe. Well, here it is. Here you go, though. It burns about two hundred thousand dollars worth of fuel per launch. Yeah, that is so, not cheap. So eventually, it will only cost a few hundred thousand per launch. You know, what we get, we we gotta we gotta just build a slingshot, man. I think we had it figured out in the dark ages with the trebuchet. Just sit your ass on that with a protective suit and just launch them up there. Yeah, post trebuchet memes in the comments. <laughs> so, um, on March 30th, 2017, SpaceX made, I guess, history as, per se as um, successfully launching and landing a used rocket. Uh, they finally sent one of their used Falcon 9s back into space after they've been testing it for about two years. Yeah, was this the same rocket that um, that landed out, in the, out there in the ocean on the platform? Yeah, this is the rocket that I'm talking about. Uh, Man, I saw that video whenever that came out, and I just could not believe what I was looking at. I was like, is this played in reverse? What's going on here? Yeah. This is the most unnatural-looking thing ever. That was record-breaking, too, right? No, that's, yeah, that's, I mean, that's what they've been doing, but this one actually went out into space and then did the same thing landing, which is, like, mind-blowing to just even watch So, so land. What, what, <laughs> what was its uh, payload? It was delivering a satellite, right? Yeah, so it's delivering a uh, communication satellite into orbit um, for a company. I forgot their name. Um, um, Pornhub, is, yeah, Pornhub is beaming yeah. <laughs> advertisements into my metal filaments in my mouth. I can hear them. I can hear the corporate scum, the globalist trying to take over. He's back with those documents. <laughs> I love Netflix documentaries. Speaking of that, um, they're supposedly in contract to send up some satellites to beam down internet around the world, even to like out of reach area areas that are hard to get to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw some other um, 
is it Google that's trying out the the Wi-Fi drones, or that's going to try that out? Yes, um, I'm not sure if they followed through with that or if they. That makes me think of uh, the movie Southland Tales. Uh, they like beam all of their energy from like an offshore. It's a movie called Southland Tales. Uh, came out a few years ago. It's got like Justin Timberlake, The Rock, Sean William Scott. One last point about uh, SpaceX is they want to colonize Mars by 2030, which is pretty close from now. You want to you want to go with me, man? You want to go on a one way trip? <laughs> That's pretty much it is a one way trip. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Um, yeah. He's like, I will only trust going up there if Elon Musk sends his mother. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. So another one I guess is kind of technology is um, I went to this Brain Candy Live event. It's starring Adam Savage from Mythbusters and Michael Stevens Vsauce. Hey, Vsauce here um, <laughs> from YouTube. And they're I thought going that around, nerd looked familiar. Yeah. <laughs> they're going around the, the country just doing like a show. Uh, it's a two-hour show they do. I went with Phil. There's people on stage doing like a molecule dance to represent water molecule. Oh, wow. Is it, was it yeah, so supposed the, to be like osmosis or something? Yeah, they're like representing like, you know, solid state, um, vapor state. And they, they, every once in a while they had uh, people go on stage, do some interactions. Uh, this one girl helped them make a little hover, a hover seat, or a hover mobile. They put, like, ten blow dryers on a piece of plywood, and they pushed her on it and had her hover. Nice. Kind of cool. Yeah. Nice. I bet it, was it loud? Uh, kind of. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't too loud. Maybe we were farther back, so I'm, maybe if you're up front, you could hear it more. Okay, okay, okay. Um, another cool thing was this um, vortex cannon. Um, do you know those um, where you pull and then the air comes out? Those little, like, cannon things, hand cannons? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, so they yeah, have one yeah. of those. They, like, they put mist in it. Um, or not mist in it, but... Um, yeah, I guess mist. And then they showed, like, the, you know, the plume come out. Oh, nice. And then they had this huge one. I'm sorry. Take that back. They had a trash can. Right. And they did a trash can version of that. And then they brought out this huge one that was like probably six feet long and maybe four feet tall. Right. And they shot that into the into the crowd and it just made this huge like O ring that stood in the air for like at least two minutes. Whoa. It was crazy. I mean it was it was almost the show is pretty cool. Um, it reminded me of high school science. And one, I guess one thing that I really took out of it, um, okay, here's a question for you. What happens when you go into space without a spacesuit on? What do they say usually happens? Um, I don't think, I mean, I know there's, they, they say that there's supposed to be a vacuum and all that stuff. I know that uh, you'll feel warmth on the direction, or if you're, the part of your body that's facing the sun um i think you might want to hold your breath or is it hold your breath or exhale all the air um i'm not sure about that i know you can't breathe in space yeah but what i got what he told us was basically if you were to go into space your the pressure is so different than down here because there's where we're feeling like like two elephant tons worth of Two elephants worth of pressure. Yeah, basically. right. But in space, there is no pressure. Right. So our our bodies will expand. Yeah, yeah. Our skins will be able to, you know, take take it uh, without popping. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, still, that, it's sort of like, it's, uh, hurt. it's sort of like uh, whenever you come up from uh, scuba diving too fast. Yeah. And then they said, do the pressure as well, um, your, your eyes would boil. Nice. And, yeah. That's metal. <laughs> um, so I, I thought that was kind of interesting because I, I always thought like it was like cold vacuum in space. When are we going to get to the point to where uh, we can just wear like groovy space suits and a bubble on our head, like a fishbowl on our head? That's what I'm looking forward to. Back in like the, the 60s. Yeah, man. Yeah. I don't want to look like a marshmallow with a window <laughs> frame on my head. I want to. I want to 
look sexy while I'm doing it. <laughs> All right, man. So you guys told us that you wanted to hear us talk about video games. So I did a little bit of research, looked into what games are coming out this month, what seemed inter- interesting. I'm personally not a Persona fan, but I know Persona 5 is coming out, and a lot of people really dig that franchise. Uh, something that I did see that I thought was particularly interesting was Bulletstorm is coming out. There's a remaster of the 2011 game. It was kind of popular. I don't know if a lot of people played it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, well, TJ will show you on the screen. Um, but Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition a clip. is uh, coming out. <laughs> and uh, as a pre-order bonus, you can play the entire campaign as Duke Nukem, voiced by John St. John. That's the voice of Duke Nukem. So uh, I know uh, I would I would actually kind of consider it because Bulletstorm wasn't that bad. It's just, uh, you know, it was just another shooter. Um, also coming out this month, is uh, Ukulele, which is uh, uh, an action adventure game uh, yeah. made by uh, the guys who made Banjo Kazooie. I, I, I don't I don't know if I want to call them I don't know if I want to call them Rareware because I don't think that's their name no. anymore. But uh, I've been I've been pretty pretty hyped about this for a while. Hopefully it's not a flop. Hopefully it goes pretty good. Uh, it it should looks be, cool. Should be out on everything um, later this month, except for the Switch. I think that might happen later on in the year. Yes. And uh, also Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is coming out for the Switch. Um, Finally another game for the Switch. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. What do they got, like three, four right now? Something? Uh, Yeah, probably about six. Underprepared. Underprepared. I remember whenever the GameCube came out, man, they they were bragging about having 180 titles within the first six months of the game's, or the console's launch. So, But, uh... Oh, so uh, let me go on a little tirade real quick. Uh, I yeah. play For Honor. It's a uh, action strategy. It's not a strategy game, but it's an action game put out by Ubisoft, and it's kind of in the same vein as uh, Dark Souls. It uh, uses what, what they call Art of War fighting style, where you play as uh, knights, samurai, and vikings, and you're fighting melee combat with weapons. And... Uh, it, lo- it looks Metal. beautiful. Yeah, it looks beautiful. It's, uh, you know, it was not ready whenever it was released in February. And I'm a Redditor, so I follow the For Honor subreddit. And uh, today that we're recording, April 3rd, is a community blackout. Uh, there's members of the community who are boycotting the game. And this made uh, headlines in the news. Uh, because people have been giving Ubisoft all this feedback on how to make the game better. You know, cut down the the grind for XP, cut down the grind for currency. Why do I have to spend cer- currency on a certain item? Like, why do I have to spend my hard-earned steel, which is like cash in the game, to, uh, to upgrade a weapon whenever I get uh, items for salvaging a weapon so that way I can upgrade it in the future um, so some people did the math they found out that if you truly played the game for two hours a day uh, to unlock everything for every character now there's only 12 characters at the start but they're planning on releasing six more this year but uh, they, they said it would be about two years worth of grinding to unlock everything for every Jesus. character and Ubisoft has not handled it really well. Um, they had a couple a couple of live streams where they said that on average uh, you should really only be maining one to three characters. People didn't like that. Um, they seemed a little out of touch. People um, were having this pretty big backlash. But this past weekend, Ubisoft did push a patch that uh, made the grind a little easier. Still going to take you a long time. Um <clears throat> They gave some buffs where people wanted it. They didn't give any nerfs that people wanted. So it looks like they still got a way to go. Uh, and I knew better whenever the game launched. I knew that Ubisoft has this history of <clears throat> releasing uh, unfinished games. I don't know if you've ever played an Assassin's Creed other than the first one, but every one of them since then has not been complete. They're pushing... Uh, patches and all of that stuff days after the release. That seems to be a trend with games nowadays. It's the game industry, man. You uh, you, you have an open beta, which is a free trial. 
people get all excited. Then they buy it a week later, and whenever bugs start, bug reports start rolling in, that's whenever the company starts trying to fix things. Uh, it's like it's like nobody wants to pay game testers anymore, or yeah, uh, or anything like that, or they just want to. I don't know. People people probably contract that, but um, hey TJ, do you know what time it is? What time is it? It's time for the thick chick of the week. Hey TJ, what up Evan? Uh, the guys over at Two Guys told us that they want us to talk about music communities. So I figure I'd let you uh, lead that. Go ahead, man. So music communities, basically in Arizona, it is really sporadic. I guess. I guess. Are we talking local scene? Uh, yeah, sure, sure. The, they really the, want the, the local scene. Uh, let's talk about that. Okay. So the local scene. First off, um, I wish there was a way that they uh, posted local shows, like a, a like, a, like a, maybe a bulletin board or a bulletin board of some sort. Yeah. Because I feel like I always have to dig around um, the internet trying to find local bands. Um, I mean, I have a few friends. That play in local bands, right? But it's definitely not organized how it should be. I can feel like it should be to be so much better out here. Well, uh, there's so much, there's whenever so much you, talent. Whenever you do it like that, uh, it makes everybody seem like they're uh, underground. Really, the only people who promote are the venues who want money, right? Yeah, if that, if they even promote it, I mean, I mean, you like, might. Like I mean, Mike if you subscribe to bands in town, you might get a notification for a big band like that. But the little guy has a hard time yeah. getting out there and advertising. Oh, for sure. Like, I get bands in town um, notifications all the time, uh, but never for local bands that I like on Facebook, which kind of sucks. Yeah. But uh, anyways, I'm, I'm sure you, you're more experienced yeah, I, with your music scene, so you'd be able to expand upon your, your thoughts more. I, uh, I, I definitely appreciate what you got going on over there, man, because uh, it seems like... It's not hard for you to go see somebody that you want to see around there. Uh, down here, we got to travel if we want to go see somebody of notor- notoriety. But uh, we've got we've got several local bands. It's hard for any of them to get a gig, get a show, um, and get paid for it without traveling. Uh, we don't have any um, real paid venues here in Alexandria, so it's it's real tough. It's real tough. It's a little discouraging. Um, you kind of got to like build yourself and then maybe play at uh, one of our art festivals or something like that um, if you're if you're just trying to go the the generic route of gaining popularity uh, there's a couple of clicks around here uh, with people who put on shows uh, semi regularly they'll rent out um, like a park place or something like that like a building to, for uh, bands to play at and uh well that's kind of hard to get into it's kind of get hard to get into um it's very it's, clicky it, yeah yeah it's definitely like a business man it's uh it's really who you know um to get in on those so it's, like a, it's, it's just like how it is to uh, if you're not in the local scene like if you're trying to get an own gig if you're trying to get in with this local group yeah it's man still, the same, still just as hard yeah, man, I was very involved with uh, uh, NDE, the non-denominational emo uh, organization, for a while. Which and I guess kind of explain to most people what that is. Yeah, it was an organization for like uh, pop punk, emo, alternative music going on underground around artists. the nation. Yeah, around ar- the nation. around the country. Um, and so I, I made contacts with a lot of people, and I get hit up more more often than I care to mention. With people looking for shows and they're giving me bad dates, they're like, "Hey, can you can you find us a show on a Tuesday?" And I'm like, "It's hard. It's hard. It's real hard." Uh, you know, it, uh, these touring bands that are making their way out there. I want to stop. I want them to come here. I want them to. I want people to come and see them. But more often than not, their their dates are bad. Or uh, whenever you, I, I try to put them in touch with somebody um, who's known for organizing these shows they're not really interested because it's not going to benefit them in any way <laughs> unfortunately uh, I always had this mindset that if you're playing a show it, it, it's a benefit to you because if it's nothing more than a number underneath your belt it's it's just another opportunity to, for people to come out and support you 
and uh, to, you know promote you, take videos and stuff like that. So oh, definitely. Yeah, uh, that's about all I got for that, man. All right. Well, um, I guess that pretty much wraps up. Um, did you have any closing thoughts or anything? I want to thank everybody for uh, listening to our first podcast. Thank, thank, uh, thank everybody for listening to this podcast. Please continue to support us. We need it. Um, it's going to get better. We're working on getting better equipment. Yeah, we're definitely working on getting uh, new equipment. Hopefully, we'll be getting those that soon. Um, I just wanted to ask you guys to uh, please uh, comment, rate, subscribe. Um, give us some type of feedback to what you think about the um, podcast we're doing. Um, also, give us some topic ideas you would like to hear us talk about if you find our, our topics interesting or our thoughts interesting. Uh, we got Instagram going, of course, yeah. YouTube, where you're, you're mostly seeing this. But on Instagram, it's um, two guys and a few good men, right? Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Okay. Uh, just look us up. And it's all one word. Obviously, it's Instagram handle. <laughs> um, the uh, YouTube, you can click on this <laughs> and go to the channel. Yeah. Uh, if you don't mind, subscribe. Give us a thumbs and, up. And then we also have a SoundCloud for if you just want the audio. And then eventually, we'll put up a website once we gain more traction. Uh, we'll, yeah, we, we, uh, we, we've got a skeleton of a website right now. We're just trying to yeah. figure out what kind of meat and bones people want to see on it. Exactly. So that's why uh, we'd like your help. If you can just shoot us some ideas on how to improve, uh, that'd be greatly appreciated. But uh, I'm going to sign off now. Uh, this has been another episode of Two Guys Small Talk. I'm TJ Washu. And I'm Evan O'Neill. Good night, motherfucker. Good night, fuck boys.